If you are bored making the same exhibits over and over again in Jurassic World Evolution, this video is going to give you some much needed inspiration for your next park build. With 10 tips for exciting enclosures, showcasing exhibit designs and fun dinosaur combinations. Oh, and hi by the way, <laughs> welcome to the video. Aside from getting some new trees and a couple of rocks, making exhibits hasn't changed much in the past two years since launch. Even if you are using mods, your number of options per park are still just as limited. So we gotta get creative. And I think we, as a community overall, have proven that we are pretty creative in getting the most out of this game. Here are 10 exhibit ideas that I've either come up with myself or that I've seen in the community and really deserve a spotlight because I know not everybody knows about these tips and tricks. If you have your own ideas to share as well, please do so in the comments because we could all use as much inspiration as we can get. Today's common shout out goes to Chris. So glad my video inspired you to want to get back into the game. I hope you have a lot of fun building. And I also hope that this video does the same for a lot of other people. Now let's just go through these 10 tips so you can start building. If at any point during this video you think to yourself, okay, all right, this chick has got some ideas. Uh, hit the subscribe, ring the bell, cause I got more of where this came from. My first tip is to just place a hotel in the middle of an exhibit. While being properly enclosed, of course. We, we wouldn't want the dinosaurs to eat our guests. Yet. In the Jurassic World era, you can simply outline the hotel and the path leading up to it with a light steel fence. You can also forego the path and instead have a monorail station by the hotel entrance and really let your overnight guest get dropped in and be surrounded by dinosaurs. This is nothing new. I've been doing this for a while, but not as often as I should, because when you think about it, if you stay in a hotel on an island with dinosaurs, this is what you want. This is the hotel room view you want. For the Jurassic Park era though, things get even better. I thought of this while making a list of things for this video, and then I tried it out and I just sat on the hotel balcony with capture mode for five minutes simply watching the view. I had hoped that the big hitbox around the JP Hotel would prohibit the dinosaurs from getting through, but they are unfortunately unfazed by the hitbox. Thankfully, we have the lights in the Jurassic Park era, which don't obstruct the view or stand in the way of immersion and actually look really nice at night. I love this so much. It's so simple that people have probably been doing this for a while and I'm just slow on the uptake, but I haven't seen anybody do this, so I had to share it. Because I was kind of done with the JP era for a bit, you know, after playing it almost non-stop since December, but now, man. Sadly though, my second exhibit tip is for the Jurassic World era. So. Until Frontier makes Mixed Eras official in a much needed update, we're still torn between the two eras. We're still faced with Sophie's choice every time we start a new park. One of the most requested parks on my channel is an abandoned park or an overrun research facility. While it's cool to do a full proper park like that, you can also scale that down to an exhibit. What I've done here is built a beautiful main street inside an enclosure with a gyrosphere tour coming through. This way, the exhibit kind of looks like a universal ride. It has a show element to it. And at night, with all of the lights, it looks especially great. I've built this on Penna, so I'd have shale to cover the track with. This helps blend it with the path and make it look less natural. But if you're on a different island, I think sand would work pretty well too. You can get the path really close to the tour track, so the terrain is not going to be too distracting. By placing food and water on opposite sides of the exhibit, you really force the dinosaurs to constantly move back and forth through the exhibit, increasing the odds of a cool dinosaur encounter for your guests. Or, you know, for the one person who truly matters. Yourself. You could tone this idea way down and just place a couple of buildings in an exhibit. This again works better in the JP era I think because the buildings aren't so blocky there with a rectangle of concrete around them. So they blend better and have, they, ha they really have that abandoned look to them. I love 
love natural exhibits as much as the next person, but this is just some much needed variety and I love how it puts the size of the dinosaurs more into perspective. Tip number three is to use my paleo plantation idea and turn it into an exhibit so as not to waste space. I've had this idea for a farm a long time ago, even before I started my channel, and I shared it on Reddit and it turned out to be really popular and even got picked up by Bessenslot, who incorporated it in his park at the time. Now, something I hear a lot is that people don't want to waste space on anything that doesn't include dinosaurs. I personally don't think it's wasted space if it makes a park overall look more interesting and realistic, but as a dinosaur fan, I get where you're coming from. Simple solution is to just enclose it with fences and drop a couple of dinosaurs in. I think it looks really unique to have them stalk through the straight lines of trees and I put a botany center and storm defense station behind the exhibit to provide an interesting backdrop. For one of the rows I use tall paleo feeders because they really look interesting and this park is built in a sci-fi world after all. So you could pretend these are like artificial trees to grow paleo vegetation for your dinosaurs. S something like that. If you can stand stretching your imagination a bit, I think this game just has so much to offer and it gets overlooked. Now, speaking of dinosaurs, if you don't want to waste any space on anything other than dinosaurs, you probably also don't want to waste any time on anything other than dinosaurs. So, I apologize to have kept you waiting, but here are some dinosaur combinations that I think are a great way to mix things up. Please note that the ones that include carnivores only work in sandbox with combat turned off. It'll be a bloodbath otherwise. We all wanted baby dinosaurs in the game and I really, I genuinely thought it was going to happen with Return to Jurassic Park. In a limited way, but still. But let's forget about that, let's forget about the trauma. Instead, we have to use our imagination again and combine our dinosaurs creatively. One of my viewers suggested using the Spinoraptor as a baby Spinosaurus, and I think that is a great idea. Especially for those who are not a fan of the hybrids, this is a way for you to get use out of the Spinoraptor. For the most realistic combination, I combined wetland Spinos with woodland Spinoraptors because they're both green, and basic Spinos with alpine Spinoraptors because they have pinkish tones. Now there's actually quite a bit of green in the Alpine Spinoraptor as well, so they, they probably work as babies for both. Something I've done in a couple of parks was use the Velociraptors as baby Spinoraptors. This will undoubtedly upset the purists and the aforementioned non-fans of the hybrids, but I like it and I thought maybe some other poor unfortunate soul would like it as well. You can pretend that the sail grows in as the animal matures. The Alpine Spinoraptor and the 2001 female Velociraptor match each other really nicely in color. The Velociraptors do get spooked, but you can play pretend that they are reaching an age when they are supposed to leave the nest and live on their own, and the parental instincts of the Spinoraptors are waning. I just like coming up with stories behind things, the park overall and the dinosaurs, forgive me. More realistic is to use the Taurosaurus as a juvenile Triceratops. At one point, scientific consensus was that the Toro was just a juvie trike, but I think, actually I'm pretty sure they've backpedaled on that one, and it's now accepted as its own species again. Still, as someone who rarely uses the Taurosaurus, but uses the Triceratops all the time since RTJP, this is a good way to get some miles out of the Toro. Tip number five. Is it though? It has to be. Let's just go with it. Tip number five. While we've gained some great attractions since launch, it's all kind of the same. Whether you're in a truck, a car, or a hamster ball, it's, uh, the view is all gonna be the same. I think using the monorail as an attraction actually provides something different, because you're giving your guests an elevated view. For me, the trick to making this convincing is to not use the monorail as transportation as well within the same park. Just have the track loop back to one station and then give that station a name like a ride. It's great for maps that are split into multiple sections like Penna, Sorna, Sorna 1993, Nublar North, 
Project Kanyo, well, pretty much every single one of them, <laughs> uh, you can dedicate an entire section to one enormous exhibit and then have the monorail sneak through. What I love doing with this is flanking the track with redwood trees so the guests are traveling through the treetops and you're momentarily blocking their view so you can have a dramatic reveal. You can achieve something similar by raising the ground on either side of the track and using the tree brush tool. By elevating the ground, the trees reach higher. And you should really play with terrain elevation throughout the entire exhibit to create different perspectives. You all know one thing I love doing with the monorails is use the tracks to create a roof-like structure. I've used this as monorail malls, but again, people want to use every inch of their maps for dinosaurs and you can, you can marry the two. It's a happy marriage, I tell you. Build a monorail roof over an exhibit for an indoor enclosure. I personally really love the look of this. You can leave the columns and sort of have them frame your view. Or if you want an open space, use scenery items and a well-placed feeder to get rid of the pillars. It looks absolutely gorgeous at night because the tracks have little lights on them. But also during the daytime, the tracks create shadows on the ground and it's, it's cool to see the dinosaurs walk through and have those shadows move over them. I always pretend that the tracks themselves are just supports and that the open space between is actually covered with glass panes. If you don't know how to build a monorail mall, I've done a tutorial on it. Two, in fact, but I'll link the most recent one since I actually sound alive in that one in the voiceover. When you are doing this over an enclosure, here's a, here's a pro tip and I learned this the hard way. Put the dinosaurs in first, because once that roof is closed, your helicopters won't be able to drop anything in and you will have to delete part of the roof and start over. It takes some fiddling and forethought, but I think is really worth it. And we have nothing but time nowadays, am I right? The next tip is something I have used in the past, but sort of forgot about until someone reminded me during a livestream. And that is that sauropods can reach over the fence to drink outside the enclosure. This brings the dinosaurs really close to the guests and it becomes like a dinosaur encounter experience comparable to what some zoos do with the giraffes. Obviously, we all know that scenery items, especially the redwood trees and the lights work really well to keep dinosaurs enclosed and it's a cool alternative to fences. If you haven't tried it, you definitely should. It's a bit of a chore to place all of the lights, but again, we have some time on our hands at the moment. Now I've seen more people use the lights and the trees as barriers, but I haven't seen anybody use the signs for the same purpose. And I get it, it looks a little too much. And to be perfectly frank, when I came up with this, I misremembered and thought one of the sides of the signs was blank concrete, but alas. Still though, for a bit of variation, I think it looks cool. Especially for like a gentle giants sort of enclosure. You can pretend that guests are allowed to reach their hand out in between the concrete pieces and reach out to the dinosaurs. And maybe the emblem is some sort of food pellet dispenser so they can feed the dinosaurs, that sort of thing. I place them really close together here, but you could space them out more. That reminds me of a lot of behind the scenes enclosures for large zoo animals like elephants and rhinos. They usually have large openings so that people can easily get through, but the animals of course can't because they be thick chunky boys. So you can also apply it in that way and pretend your rangers can get in to take care of the animals. You know, instead of driving in in a jeep and just shooting them. That's their solution for every dinosaur problem. Also, great bonus about the signs is that the guests don't actually freak out on the other side of this perimeter. Unlike the lights and the redwoods, which the guests don't register as a sufficient um, barrier between them and the dinosaurs, they freak the hell out and scream and run away. And that doesn't happen with the signs. See, nobody cares. That's a plus. Another plus is that it's actually, you know, in a non-far-fetched kind of way, it's just a way to bring a concrete barrier into your Jurassic Park park. Of course, we have concrete fences in the Jurassic World era, though we don't in the Jurassic Park era, until Frontier makes mixed eras official. 
So if you want that concrete look in your Jurassic Park, this is the closest we have to a solution for that. Second to last tip, I am the artist formerly known as Crazy Path Lady, so I had to bring this to your attention. You can use path inside an enclosure too. Obviously, you saw that in the second tip taken to the extreme by actually making a road, a main street. But here I'm talking about using it to make designs to give some personality to an enclosure. Also, for some dinosaurs or for a battle arena, I just like to cover the whole exhibit with the dirt path and then leave only the smallest amount of space for water and a feeder. Makes it look really unnatural and unethical, but sometimes that's just the aesthetic that you're going for. Final tip for a unique exhibit is a bonus biome. You may have seen my video on how to create 10 different biomes in Jurassic World Evolution. Well, here is number 11, which I kind of forgot to include, namely Tundra. A combination of the rock and sand texture for me evokes the look of permafrost. Unless you use mods, you don't have snow in the game and we're on tropical island, so I guess that makes sense. But we're looking for variety here and this is that. The smallest of the redwood trees are stand-ins for pine trees, which is something I do for other biomes as well. If you haven't seen that video on 10 biomes, the link is in the corner right now. If I didn't forget, go check that out if you are still thirsty for more exhibit inspiration. But before you go, please leave a like on this video and let me know in the comments if you will be implementing these enclosure ideas. For more tips, tricks, tutorials, and tours for my everlasting obsession, Jurassic World Evolution, subscribe to the channel. I'm hoping I can help you build parks and you can help me build this channel. It's a relationship. It's based on mutual respect. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, enjoy the game.